morning, Rainbow Friends. Okay, like we were saying in today's calendar video, our new amazing artist is Pablo Picasso. Now, he was an amazing artist even since he was a child because his father taught art. But when he became older as an adult, he decided he wanted to paint a new style and he got very inspired by Paris and France. So he decided to move to Paris. And there is where he started his new set of paintings and their beautiful, great artworks that are all over the world now. Okay, so we're gonna, today we're gonna read a little story called Paris in the Spring with Picasso, written by John Yolick and illustrated by Marjorie Priceman. All right, let's see. On any day of the week, if you cross Paris's Luxembourg Garden going west, you will come to a cobbled street called Rue des Flores. Now, this book has a lot of French words in it, and I am not the best at speaking French, but I know our Rainbow Room has a friend who is excellent at it, little Mr. Charlie. So I'm gonna try my very best to pronounce some of these words. If I don't pronounce them right, I am so sorry, but Charlie, if you can feel free to send us videos of how we pronounce these words. Okay, so I'm gonna give it my best try. <coughs> okay, follow it to number 27 and you will arrive at the home of Gertrude Stein and her brother Leo. When you knock on the door, Ellen, the housekeeper, will let you in. Bonjour, hello, como ça va? How are you today? Upon entering the tiny hall, you might adjust your hat in the big oval mirror. Uh, if you brought an umbrella, just leave it in the stand. Ellen will take you into the salon, but don't expect her to stay. She has cooking to do. Every Saturday, no matter what the season, Gertrude and Leo have a soiree. Soiree? Sweaty, sweaty. Charlie, please let us know how you pronounce that. Um, an evening party. Friends come for dinner, and then at around nine o'clock, the house is open to anyone who might like to visit. My, ooh, my attende. Wait, we're getting ahead of ourselves. It's still early, and Gertrude's friends are just beginning their day. How will they spend it? Shall we visit them and see? Oh, okay. Bulimé mm. Apollinaire steps down from the train on his way from, from an overnight stay with his mother. Strolling along the avenue lines with stalls, he thinks there is no place more beautiful than Paris. So we're meeting a new friend called Apollinaire. When he sees a crowd gathered, Apollinaire crosses the street in front of Everyone, an acrobat, is setting a big red ball on the ground. It's right there. The acrobat jumps lightly on top and begins to spin the ball with his feet. As it twirls, he dances to the music of a violin played nearby. Only when it starts to rain does he leap off and run to cover. The acrobat gives Apollinaire an idea for a poem, and pulling on his straw hat, he hurries home. There he is. He's hurrying home. This is the acrobat, and the, it starts to rain. Okay. In his apartment on Rue Leonet, Apollinaire takes out pen and paper. He imagines the spinning acrobat and remembers the diamond mirrors of his costume flashing like lightning before a storm. So these little lines that they have here is to resemble glitter or the flashing of the of his suit because it, it looked like it had a ton of little mirrors on it. He can almost hear the rap of thunder under, un, until he realizes it is someone knocking at his door. It's Marie Laurent Sin. Mm, I don't think I pronounced that right. Come in, Coco, says Apollinaire using his girlfriend's nickname. Apollinaire realizes he won't have time to write down his poem and thinks instead, I'll tell the story tonight at Gertrude's soiree. You look as pretty as a picture, says Apollinaire. Thank you, Coco replies. I brought some sketches. So now we're meeting uh, Marie, or Coco is her nickname. Mm -hmm. Ooh, we gotta switch the book. Pardon, 
Pardon moi, excuse me, I must interrupt for just a moment to tell you about these sketches. About these sketches are of Pol Apollinaire and their friends Pablo and Fernand. While the couple looks at them, let's visit them. Let's visit with Max Jacob, who lives up the hill. So now we're going to learn about a new friend called Max. Max's apartment is in a tumble-down building he named the Batois Le Voix, hmm, the wash boat, because it reminds him of the laundry boats where women do washing. His dearest friend Pablo lives upstairs. Well, so there's a lot going on in this this picture here. Oh, book comes back. Max came in very late last night and fell asleep with all his clothes on. When he wakes, he must he makes a cup of sweet coffee and adds water to a vase of flowers. As he remembers that tonight is Gertrude's soiree, he, his eyes twinkle and he hangs his silk cape on the door. Then he leans on a silver handled cane up against it. When he sets his top hat out on the crumpled bed, he dreams about his father's tailor shop. Come back, his tailor shop come back to him. Sitting down as at his writing table, he begins to write. So here's Max. You met Max. He has his cup of coffee, he put flowers, he put water for a new batch of flowers, and he's writing, remembering how it was in his father's tailor shop. A woman left their buggies outside the shop under chestnut trees. Back then I was very little and only came up to their knees. So he's thinking back to when he was a kid. He was a little, little kid. Max, tell us about the newest fashions, they would all tease. And I showed them my favorite color, Zinzoli, if you please. Then father fixed their dresses and after he pulled out the last pin, the ladies would say, we'll be back next season wearing Zinzolin. See, that was his father and he would make dresses for uh, many women. So he's just remembering when he was a kid and he'd go to his dad's shop. The hours fly by, Max barely hears the patter of rain and only looks up when Pablo's dog scratches at his doors and then scampers upstairs. Pardon moi, but I am going to stop the story once again. I want to say I am very curious to meet Pablo. Let's visit with him while Max is working. Written in chalk on the door outside Pablo Picasso's studio are messages from friends. Tote was here. Manolo is at the cafe. Inside, Pablo stands barefoot. There he is, barefoot. Thinking about the painting he's working on, all he worked on throughout the whole night. There it is. He painted, he painted quickly, squeezing paint from tubes and dropping them to the ground. He didn't bother to light the oil lamp, but painted holding a candle in one hand and a brush in the other. Sweeping a lock of hair from his forehead, Pablo studies his painting of two women. Then he mixes brown with some black and begins to work. His brilliant black eyes never leave the canvas. The women grow bigger, as if they have gained weight and square, so they look very strong. He looks very focused. That's better thinks Pablo of his painting, and he puts down his brush and goes into an alcove to change for the party. When he returns wearing his favorite polka dot shirt, he rereads the note his girlfriend has left. Pablo, I am out walking Frica. She was barking and I didn't want her to wake you. Ferdinand. Ferdinand's real name is Emily, but she has changed it like other models in the neighborhood. A few seconds before she enters the studio, Pablo smells her perfume. So he smells her he smells her perfume that she sprayed on the note, and that's him reading her story. Her note. Frika and I were caught in the rain and went into the Lapin Agile. Lapin Agile. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Says Fernand. Hardly anyone was in the restaurant, but Freddie was playing his guitar and we stayed until the rain stopped. Pablo dries Fernand's hair as Frika jumps at his side wanting to play, rubbing Frika's fur, he says. I think I'll bring you to the soiree tonight. 
Bonne Ardi, answers Max, who appears at the door, close, closely followed by Apollinaire and Marie. So Max is coming in, Apollinaire and Marie, this is Fernan, Pablo Picasso, and this is their, their little dog, Frika. And Pablo just said, hmm, I think we'll take Frika to the evening party today. At the, as the sun sets over Notre Dame Cathedral, Frika leads the party down, t down the stairs and out into the streets of Paris. Shall we follow along? On their way, they pass the Lapin Agile and catch a whiff of elephants and monkeys from the Circus Medran. So they're walking down the streets and the circus had to have been in town. The big elephant, like an acrobatic, monkey. And they're all these beautiful colors. The sunset brings out so many different colors. They cross the river and glance into a cabaret where a man in a red scarf and a black beret sing to the crowd. The electric streetlights go on. There are many things to do in Paris, yet they never stop on their way to Gertrude's salon. You know, mon ami, neither would I. Let's go ahead and visit with Gertrude before they arrive. So now they're on their way walking to Gertrude's house and there's so much going on in the city of Paris. It's I've never been to Paris, but they say it is very beautiful and there's a lot of lights. So they're walking around, but they're not stopping or getting distracted anywhere. So now we're gonna go see Gertrude's house before they arrive. The salon is almost ready. Gertrude sits reading in a big comfy chair, her feet tucked under her. Above the chair is a portrait of her painted by Pablo. You can see just a little bit of it right there. In the picture, she is wearing the same scarf and corduroy robe that she has on tonight. Lau isn't home yet. He is in the cafe talking with friends. Ellen is busy in the kitchen as Alice B. Toklas, Gertrude's best friend, arranges cakes on the table. Gertrude hears her big gypsy earrings jingle. So she's wearing these big dangly earrings. And when she's walking around fixing the cakes, they make a sound. Looking up from her book, Gertrude says, Sweetie, did you finish typing the pages I left for you this morning? Yes, lovey, says Alice. And what did you think, my birdie? asks Gertrude. I thought you must have been up late writing, says Alice. It was very good. Gertrude likes Alice's answer and she chuckles as she gets up to fix the flowers. Um, she smells one of the roses and whispers to herself. What are you saying, lovey? asks Alice. I was saying, says Gertrude in her deep, warm voice, a rose is a rose is a rose is a rose. You are repeating, says Alice. I love repeating, and you love my repeating, says Gertrude, chuckling again. So they're just making a little bit of jokes, smelling the flowers, talking a little bit before the guests come. A knock in the door brings Ellen hurrying from the kitchen. Bonjour, comment ça va? She says to Pablo and his friends entering the hall. Fernand and Marie stop for a moment to adjust their hair in a big oval mirror. So that's them, they're adjusting their hair. As Max tips his cane into the umbrella stand, he softly whispers, Zinzolin would be the perfect color for an umbrella. Apollinaire tosses his straw hat onto the stand so that it catches and spins on the handle of Max's cane like an acrobat twirling on his ball. So he throws it off and it's gonna land in his cane over here and twirl, reminding him of the acrobat from earlier. Pablo leads them into the salon and his brilliant black eyes see Gertrude under her picture, picture looking just as he had painted her. That's her picture and there's her. Uh, hearing Frika bark a greeting, Gertrude lets out a big hearty laugh. Pablo laughs too, and the party begins. As guests arrive, they look at the paintings on the wall, they talk and laugh, and between the tinkling of glasses, I hear the voices of our friends. So now they're at the party, people are looking at the beautiful artwork, 
They're laughing, talking, eating cakes. Sounds like a good party. But it is getting late now, and it is time for bed. Tonight, under the stars that twinkle over Paris, I will dream of Gertrude's party. I wonder what everyone will talk about. about. Que ti, oh, que ti imagine? I hope I pronounced that right. My friend, what do you dream they will say? This is a little drawing of what Paris looks like at night. The stars, all the houses, if there's a cat jumping. The end. Oh, this is actually a little, um, it has pictures of what the real people look like, because we saw drawings of them. But this is Gertrude Stein. This is a real picture of her. Pablo Picasso when he was very young. Max Jacob. He was a poet, a writer, and Apollinaire, right there, another poet and playwright, and Alice B. Tolkien, which is Gertrude's um, friend. She was also a writer and a great cook. All right, that's it, Rainbow Friends. I hope you enjoyed our story about Pablo Picasso. And I will see you tomorrow morning for our calendar video.